Hello and welcome to the vlog. It's time for my autumn cruise to begin and I'm picking up where I left off at Fradley Junction. I've spent the last six summer weeks at King's Orchard Marina. It was very nice there, friendly staff, friendly other boaters, had a good time and now I need to crack on up the Trent and Mersey. I need to be at the town of Stone by Wednesday lunchtime, it's now Sunday morning, as I'm picking up a guest, another of the boat tubers is going to come aboard and help me through the locks of Stone, Stoke-on-Trent, and then depending or not on whether she's bored of my company by that point, possibly up a little bit of the Calden Canal, opening some of these swing and lift bridges I think you find along there. So that's the plan for the next few days. It's about, I think, 21 miles and a smattering of locks between here and Stone. Before I set off, there is one important thing I need to do. I normally wear a baseball cap or something as I'm going along, and I'm going to attach my latest enamel pin badge to my cap. This is uh, from the lovely ladies of the Narrowboat Experience, of course, and it says, don't forget your windlass, which is sound advice. If you would like your own one of these, they do them with narrowboats on. They've got a load of uh, uh, different ones, as well as, of course, Anna's lovely artwork. Oh, by the way, I'm not on commission, wish I was, and they're not paying me to say this. They are just good friends, so I thought I'd give them a plug. So if you want one of these yourself, go to artbyannamarie.com. I'll leave a link anyway in the video description below. Once that is on, I can set off. I had to film this boat in front of me. I really, really like it. Just something very characterful about all the details on it. And look at that tunnel lamp on the front. That is a beauty. It's a popular spot, Fradley, so there was a long line of boats to chug slowly past. Let's do in video what I can't do on the boat and speed round the corner. Blocking the Coventry Canal from the Trent and Mersey is a swing bridge, but it's easy enough to open with a place to stop to the side. But my luck was in as another boater, who'd pulled up to come through the other way, opened the bridge for me so I could sweep on straight through. Sorry about the image being so bright, the sun was reflecting back off the pub directly ahead, but you can just make out the bridge being opened. Out onto the Trent and Mersey, and a sharp left. But what's that? It's a raft raising money for cancer research and the air ambulance. Good luck to them. Finishing the turn here, the canal is heading southwest, and there are two locks directly ahead. I was worried that there wasn't a lock landing here due to all the moored boats, but it's just an optical illusion. You can pull in just beyond that final boat on the right and go to get the lock ready, although luck was again with me here, as volunteer lock keepers were on duty and doing all the hard graft of managing the boats through. I had to wait though, there was another boat coming down, and the locky wanted to let him do that before sending me up, though it did take an age. It's all about water conservation though, and I was in no hurry. At last the other boat was put through and I could move mine into the lock, a queue having built up behind me. One waiting on the landing, two coming up behind. I did say this is a busy spot. With the lock raised and the gate open, I could edge forward to the next one, which you can just see in the distance. The locky there had it all ready and the gates open, so I could cruise straight in. I always check if the lock keeper wants me to help or stay on the boat, and they always say stay on the boat, which generally suits me. Although you're not obliged to use their help if you don't want to, it's your lock when your boat's in it, and you can do it how you want.
not a bad day for boating. Past the rather nice mooring spots at the top here and onwards into the very pretty tree-lined section ahead. That is lovely, isn't it? Here the canal turns through 90 degrees and begins heading northwest. I'd rather hoped I'd go straight into the next lock waiting around the corner, but instead hit the longest lock queue I've ever encountered. About six boats waiting, with one in the lock and a load also waiting to come down. This was going to take a while. I like to think that I know how to handle my boat, but as the saying goes, pride comes before a fall, or in this case, before a bang into another boat, as you'll see. When we all started to shuffle up as another boat disappeared into the lock, the one immediately ahead of me didn't in fact move because it was stuck on the silt, so I began to overshoot it because I wasn't stuck. Not wanting to appear as if I were trying to jump the queue, I went into harder stern, and my boat did what it always does then, helped by the stiff breeze coming from the left, and it slung itself sideways across the canal. As I frantically revved to reverse out of the way, my bow clonked the very shiny, classic-engined boat in front. Brace yourself. I was then sideways on the canal, with my stern stuck in the silt on the left, and the bow sliding gently down the other boat's gunnels. If you've never had this happen, it is excruciatingly embarrassing, albeit not that uncommon a thing. At the same time, he was still trying to get off the silt, so we did a merry dance, I tell you. I shouted an apology, and eventually we were free, but I kept a substantial distance between us after that, and considered emigrating, such was my shame. With five boats still waiting ahead, this was to be a long time to sit behind someone you've just thumped. At last I went up in the lock, the boat ahead long gone, much to my relief. Well that just added about an hour and 20 minutes I reckon. Long queue, about five boats ahead of me, several more behind me, but everyone being very amiable about it. The weather's decent, and there's nothing you can do, so you just take your time. Onwards now, towards Hansacre. You might think the canal is always a haven of serene tranquillity, but not so, especially when just behind the trees some machinery is working away. The weather was beginning to look less positive. But daisies on the towpath are always a pleasure to see. Or are they weeds? I'm no gardener. My prediction came true, and the rain started to spatter the canal like meteorites hammering the moon. Here's a little marina, King's Bromley Wharf, I think. Regular viewers know I'm rather partial to a small narrowboat. 
Immediately after the wharf, it's King's Bromley Marina. And the canal carries on through lots of countryside with occasional swans for company, peering optimistically at the boat in the hope of a feed. Dramatic skies foretold doom of the soggy variety again. Yep. I'd intended to get through Hansacre, but with the rain and the annoyance of banging that boat still bugging me, I decided I'd had enough and pulled the boat into the first bit of metal armco I could find to have a break for lunch. I'd have stayed there for the night, but the canal was shallow at the side and the boat bottom was graunching noisily on the silt, so I carried on past this viewer of the vlog. Hello! He kindly gave me due warning of several canoes up ahead, possibly kayaks, I've never quite known the difference. There they are, and they helpfully got well out of the way. Through the town of Hansacre, again a very popular place to moor, lots of boats there, I was looking for an evening spot now, and this would do, a wide open straight stretch. The journey continues in the next video. Join me then, won't you?